I'm here with the guys uh, from Sintra who are doing a very special thing. See the guy next to me, this is not a cosplayer. This is a guy wearing a sensory outfit and those movements are actually depicted back there on the screen. How does this actually work? Yeah, very fine, it's, uh, it, it, fits, it fits well. How does the technology behind it work? Uh, very, it's very precise, as you can see, uh, when I step, there is a small motion and uh, yeah, it, it fits the suit, it fits the motion, so uh, it's realistic. So do the sensors have motion sensors or is there a radar system? Uh, there is uh, some kind of motion. Uh, as you can see, it's very stretchable, it's very unlikely that uh, it, ca it can come loose, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, as you can see, it's very precisely, so... Uh, so how many, how, many how many sensors are on a suit like this? Uh, I think, as I can count, uh, a lot of more than 20, 30, I think, so uh, it's, it's over my whole body. Why is this, uh, in what uh, sense is this technology used? Uh, it's used in games, in films, uh, motion capture. It's like uh, bringing a 3D uh, realistic uh, actor in a 3D environment. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, if you just take a look at what cosplayers have to go through, this guy is covered in what can only be called a blanket with a helmet. How hot is that? It's incredibly hot. I'm dying. So why didn't you go for a Princess Leia outfit? Because I'm already blue. Okay. So if you sit behind your computer and the computer says delete cookies. I eat them. Okay. Thank you. I'm here with Kini from the Ultraviolet stand and they sell an amazing array of, um, well, uh, accessories, but especially these colored lenses. What is so hot about these colored lenses? To be honest, I'm not sure <laughs> why they're so hot, but it's an extra accessory on the outfits and mostly if you like a Halloween outfit or if you cosplay, it's a really nice accent because if you talk to people, you always look at them in the eye and that's something that uh, takes the attention of the person. Now I want to know, um, how does it work? Is it just a lens that goes on your eye? Yes, they're soft lenses, just like normal, um, like normal lenses. Um, like um, eye corrective lenses but these are more cosmetic so you just have fluid where you store them in and it's just the same like normal lenses except that you cannot wear them every day so basically the eye consists of um, of the pupil and the iris yes. now the iris is the colored part the pupil is the black part now when there's low light the pupil gets bigger yes. now how does that work I mean the lens is basically the colored iris with a hole in the yes, middle. It is. So when you're under low light, your pupil will go behind the lens. Um, well, that was something I was wondering too, but it really depends on the eye of the person. I've never had anyone saying that they um, saw the tunnel corners, vision. yeah, that they got tunnel vision. But I, uh, I think that if you really get really big. Um, Irises, uh, pupils, pupils, yes, pupils. Yeah. That it will depend on the width of the of your pupil and the pupil on the lens. But normally, it's okay. I never had any complaints about it. But. So, uh, as for health and safety, you said you don't have, you can't wear them yes. every day. How do you? Uh, what do you uh, actually advise people how to use them? Um, we have three month lenses and we have year lenses. Um, it uh, on, only means like uh, when opening the lenses, after a year you have to dispose them, or three months you have to dispose them, and then only on special occasions, like when you go to a party, maybe once a week, it really depends on, you don't wear them every day, that, that's for sure. So, um, how much does it cost? Um, it depends on the... Um, the time that you can have them yep. and the design the normal colors like the natural colors are 22 euros and then the crazy designs of three months are about uh, 25.99 and then you have the year lenses and they're about 30. 
So what's what's your most popular product? Which ones do really sell? Um, well, it depends where. Here we we really sell the like the crazy ones, like the ones like from um, movies and anime series. But in normal shop, we all, all almost sell every time like normal blue and normal green. Just people who normally have brown eyes who want blue eyes or green eyes. But for special occasions like Halloween, we really sell the special like cat eyes and the crazy ones. Okay, so uh, where do you uh, you have a website? Can people buy them online? Um, we have a website. It's um, ultraviolet. That's the name, and then we have uh, where where did you? This is from the lens. Okay. So this is ultraviolet slash. It's a coupling yeah, a dash, sticker. Yeah. yeah, dash and dot be. But the website at this moment is not up to date. We're working really hard on it, so it should be finished in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, one more question: Are you wearing lenses right now? No, that's my natural eye because um, I can't put anything in my eyes myself. <laughs> so you can just have colored glasses. Yeah, we have colored grasses too. <laughs> okay, thank you for talking to us and good luck today. Same to you, thank you very much. I can just about see you uh, leaving home going like, Mom, where's my giant axe? Did you put it in the laundry? That is a pretty, pretty impressive um, armament to uh, drag around. Is it heavy? No, it's not heavy at all. Um, it's a, I don't know how much it weighs, but it's like really light. It's being made out of polystyrene, and that's quite light. So, so uh, your costume, you are dressed up as? Sasha from Second Quasar. It's a quite edgy anime that aired recently. The second season came out recently, so like not many people know it, but I think it's quite famous on the other, like. Yeah, it's uh, an anime not many people like because of the edgy, but... Uh, it's niche, but it's good. Yeah, I like it. I so, like it a lot. So you actually have a very special character that you uh, that you put into portrait. How hard is it to get hold of the costume? Um, I made... Uh, I just bought, like, like it's a normal black pants that you can find everywhere. And I just, like, bought some clothes and edited them myself. So you added all the layers on top of the yeah. clothes that you bought? Yeah. yeah. Like sometimes I make my costumes, sometimes I buy them from internet. Like if it's too difficult, I buy them. Or if like the fabrics are like way too expensive to buy like for real and make something out of it, then I buy it and otherwise I'll just try to fix something myself. How long did it take you to put a costume like this together? Um, I think this one took me two weeks or more, like uh, just assembling stuff. But the weapon took me five days, and so, so you made the weapon yourself? Yep, I made it myself. What's it made out of? It's made of polystyrene. Um, it's used to uh, isolate houses with, like uh, I don't know if I say it wrong. Yeah, yeah polystyrene. Yeah. Like a uh, fiberglass. Actually. Yeah. yeah. No, it's like polystyrene, um, as in like a it's like a big green plate that yeah. you can use like to. Like to keep your house warm, right? yeah, like yeah. you put it in the roof. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I cut it out with the uh, razor, yeah, with the razor blade, and then I covered it with the uh, epoxy. It's made like it's used to make boots with, and with uh, also fiberglass. It's amazing. Well, I hope you have a great day today. Yeah, I will. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, um, wait, I'm here with uh, one of the most um, attractive uh, guys of the bunch here. Oh, so, I'm pretty orc. You're the orc. So, what's it like being an orc on a convention like this? Feels great, feels great. So, do you have to do a lot of um, uh, work to get the whole, the whole orc thing, like the bodily odor and the drooling? Does that really come natural, or is that something that they teach you in orc class? I am natural talent. So natural talent, the yes. dro drooling, farting, everything just comes. Burping. Burping. Yes. Burping. Lick, lot of, licking. Licking. Lot of licking. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry. Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> well. No pushy, pushy. <laughs> how's how's how does the orc outfit work with the ladies? Ladies like Grishnik. Me Grishnik. 
they like the orcs. Yes. I see. I see some of the ladies over there really going like, oh. I call you later. <laughs> you call me. I hope you find a lot of ladies there at the Fox this year. Yes, we'll do. Well. Okay. Thank you, orc. <laughs> So I'm here with Martin from Tsunacon and uh, behind me we have an impressive array of very old video games. Now, could you just describe in general what is lined up here behind me? Uh, that's a Sega Mega Drive, Sega. That's a uh, Super NES from Nintendo. We have also uh, another, another uh, Nintendo console and an Atari game. So in when we take a look at the con here, there are a lot of um, new game developers and designers here with the latest and the greatest, yet still these old machines really draw a crowd. Why is this so popular? I think the nostalgia. I think the people grow up with this kind of games and characters and they have an eternal love for it. I think that is, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So is gameplay and the quality of a game still about um, the graphics, or is it more about the way you play the game? Yeah, I think the feel, the feel of a game. It's uh, it draws you in, and it, it takes you over, and yeah, it stays with you. So, what do you guys do? You actually collect these and uh, organize events where people can use them? Uh, we have our own convention in the Netherlands, and uh, we have video games, but also Japanese animation and other things. Of Japanese stuff, but also old video games, but new video games. We're organizing uh, events also in the, in, yeah, in Belgium to promote our cars, to promote uh, Japanese uh, stuff. So, where do you get all of these? Online or, or uh, via collectors? Oh, collection. Our fans, our sponsors, they, uh, they give the things to us, or we uh, get from our uh, own uh, houses to. Uh, Put them over here. Okay, and where can people find you online if they're interested? Uh, .nl. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy your set. Thank you. Have a nice day. Hi, I'm here with Wim at the uh, R2 Builders Club. We interviewed you guys last year. Uh, you make these amazing R2 Astromech replicas. And this year, there's something special for you guys here. Uh, yes, uh, this year, uh, Kitty Baker came by to say hi. It was a really great uh, photo opportunity for us. So Kenny Baker is the actor that was originally in the R2, D2 in the movies. Now, did you get a chance to talk to him? Um, well, I've talked to him earlier, so for me, it was not a special chance to talk to him, but I've seen him uh, many times over the years. But it was uh, great to have him here now because we had uh, a European record. We had 17 boys here yesterday. Um, so it was great to have a, a nice group photo. That's uh, the first time we could do that. So is there a lot of difference between the insides of the R2 units you build and the insides of the R2 units Kenny had to work in? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, the one uh, with Kenny was uh, really a basic uh, droid, it had no electronics in it, uh, just a little for the lights and stuff. But the droids we built are fully remote control, uh, they have lights, they have panels opening and such. Um, so they're a lot more sophisticated than it was uh, back in the 70s. Okay, so um, are there any new additions to this year? Any new droids that have come along or that haven't been here last year? Uh, yes, we have uh, many new builders, uh, many people starting uh, with droids. Um, there's a few of them uh, building new droids. Uh, well, um, one in the back here, yeah, it's the guy is building it completely out of plastic. Uh, it's very sturdy, but uh, most of them are built out of uh, aluminium. Uh, but we can do it on every budget, really. It's amazing. So how long does it take to complete one of these? It depends on how much time and effort you put into it. Uh, I'm a lazy guy. I've been working on it for six years now. It's 90%